Hey there, Hangster OG here. Welcome to Crush Your Mountain. I just want to let you know that the video you're about to see is a special interview dealing with schizophrenia. It's something that can help anyone that's dealing with some sort of challenge, especially one that's a mental challenge. I'm leaving links down at the bottom below that will lead you to various resources where you can get help. But just see what's possible with this particular video, this extraordinary person. Without any further ado, let's get into the video. All right. Well, good morning and welcome to Crush Your Mountain Personal Growth. Sandra McKay, they, at an early age, began to deal with auditory as well as visual hallucinations. She was diagnosed with schizophrenia, and that could have totally destroyed her life. But she's here with us today. She's an amazing woman. I've known her for several years. And just to give you an idea, uh, about the type of individual she, she was, in, in, in spite of the challenges that she faced. She graduated from the United uh, of the University of British Columbia. She had the Courage to Come Back Award. She's published three books, one of which was My Schizophrenic Life. The other one is Chop Stick. And also, now, I'm, I don't want to mess up the name of the last one, so we're going to ask Sandra to tell me the name of the last one. Yeah, from New York to Vancouver that I co-wrote with a fellow in New York. Absolutely. And finally, you know, one of the other things that she's accomplished, she received the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal for overcoming severe adversity. So we're so excited to have her with us today. I'm going to tell you something. Um, you want to talk about adversity, and this is why this is so important. So you tell me, first of all, what is your process? Yeah, so I started painting um, when I got out of high school, actually, and I got a fine arts diploma at Langara College, and art was really a refuge for me. It was a place to escape into a world where, you know, I was, it was just about the craft, it was just about creating, and that whole high you get from being in the studio, um, it really made me uh, also be able to express, like, negative and positive emotions. So if I'm going through stuff, some ang angst and stuff, I could put it on, put it in the art throw everything into the art. So it was really kind of a healing kind of process for me. And if you go through the years, if you follow my art through the years, you can see the progression of how my art changed over time from a very, you know, more a darker side with a play of elements, personal struggle into really um, paintings of wellness and joy and happiness. Yes. Now I'm going to ask a favor on that note. You have my schizophrenic life with you. I want to show her, I want to show everyone the cover of that book because I think that reflects some of the beginnings there. Am I correct to say that? Could you, can you tell us where you were coming from emotionally when you did that cover, when you did, when you did yeah. the art that became that cover? Yeah. So this painting on the cover is called Modern Hieroglyph. And it's a bit about how the red, which represents my illness, kind of obliterated my life, right? It's, it just overtook and splattered all over what I had. But then at the same time, there's color and joy in the colors. So there's this kind of idea of hope on the horizon as well. Yes. It, yeah, um, it kind of it, relates to like um, uh, Rorschach paintings and that sort of thing as well. Rorschach paintings. Yeah. Now, you did a one called The Silent Woman, am I correct? Yes, yes. So the silent woman um, I did when I got out of college, and it's this woman, but she has no mouth. And it sort of articulates how um, I was so ill, but unable to voice or articulate what, what was happening for me in my life. Because I didn't really know the ins and outs of schizophrenia. I was really suffering in silence. So that painting is very personal for me. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Then later on, you did, you did one called Two Flowers. There were irises. Um, would you share that with us? Could you do you call that yeah. one? Yeah. So that painting is about the yin yang. Okay. So it had. I'll, I can send you these photos later. So um, the purple iris represents um, the darker, the darker side, and the yellow iris represents the more positive uh, aspects of life. And the backgrounds are very vivid and beautiful. So it's really about that tension that we have between um, you know good forces and evil forces in our lives. Hmm. So, you know, you, yourself, you are almost um, presenting yourself or saying emotionally now that you are reaching that natural balance. 
and had in your life at that time and you found that yeah yeah it was really to reach those times of equilibrium right where things are kind of balanced in your life and it's all about moderation right like don't go too far in any one direction but just kind of um, work with what you have and just push through yeah yeah but one of the things that um that you know in my research and us talking uh, that came to my came to light was that your dad was a tremendous support to you as oh, yeah. Mom. yeah yeah he really believed in me like my family you know they said Sandra you have this illness but you can still have a good life you can still go to school you can have you can get married you can have an education get a job you know they didn't see it as like the end the end of the road they said Sandra you can still make it you can still have a great life and it turned out I did. And I met a wonderful fellow. We got married. Um, he's, I'm still with him 26 years this, this August. Um, and he's been insurmountable in, you know, in, in caring for me and helping me out. Um, he tutored me in college and then you know, got through university because he tutored me. But also my biological family as well. And the family I married into, I'm really, really lucky to have the support of a lot of people. Sandra, you, you drew on your strengths that you had. You didn't focus on the weaknesses itself. And actually, in some ways, you might even say the weakness almost fueled the strength, as it were. Yeah. That's the, thing. But the other thing that was important was your support that you had. You know, so that's so important. You know, dealing with mental illness, it's common for people not to fully understand. Mm -hmm. And when you don't understand, then patients can run out and of course, there are maybe cultural influences that, that we have to take, take into consideration too. But you know, one of the things that's so important you know, is that patience that, ha that comes from understanding that you're family. Yeah, for example, my husband, okay? So he, he knows me when I'm well, right? That's the standard he knows. But he knows I have these darker times or episodes I might go into for a day, a week, an hour at a time. So he, he understands enough that I need space at that time. He can be on the periphery. And when I come back to reality, then I'm all there 100% again. But he understands my cycles. He understands my illness and how it can move in, in ebb and flow. And he's willing to work with that and help me through the difficult times and be there and enjoy the support, you know, the good times as well. So that's really what our relationship, it's a lot of give and take. And he, he is, he's just, he's wonderful, yeah. I had the privilege of meeting Glenn, and it was amazing to talk with him briefly. And, you know, we both understood the importance of, again, that support. Back to your books now, okay? We understand the, your, your first book, My Schizophrenic Life, is certainly a, a story about you, okay? Actually, it's your autobiography. Yeah. And I, that, um, that, I think that influenced quite a few people, okay? But now... Yeah. You moved into comedy, which I was surprised about because I remember when you were, when you were doing my schizophrenic life. So tell us about chop shtick, okay? And for those of you who are too young to understand what shtick is, okay, <laughs> shtick is a form is a, is a form of comedy. It's it, you know, and it's it's, I, it's a lot of dialogue, a lot something, okay, a lot of um, you know, not necessarily suggested innuendo, but it's you know, you know, sometimes it's double speak. You talk a little bit about that. Help us to appreciate that more, because I know people are going to want to get the book. <laughs> okay, great. So that's Chopstick. Um, so yeah, this this cover is actually Chopstick on a piece of canvas, okay? So that's the idea there. So it's kind of actually, um, it's fictional, but it's sort of a sequel to my memoir, because it touches, I'm kind of playing the main character. It's kind of loosely based on reality. Um, and so it's about me and my friends, like we, work, we call ourselves the big six, and a group of artists who come together and get a commission to do an upcycled sculpture in downtown Vancouver. And it's wow. just a ride. It is a, it's a hoot. It's really fun. It pokes fun at all types of things. Uh, but it also has some real messages there around relationships, around bonds, around mental illness, about art. And it's, it's really entertaining. It's a light read. You'll get through it. You'll read it through in a, a few days. It's, it's really fun. We're in the age of COVID, and mm -hmm. uh, some folks have more time than they have, than yeah. they, they bargain for. 
So this is an opportunity to take some time, okay, to, and to um, and to get to know this aspect of the art of Sandra McKay. We really appreciate all of our uh, of our discussion, you know. But I'm going to run. I'm going to again ask one last thing about you. With all the things you do, because you're still with the Schizophrenic Society there, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're still doing, and and so you just you're, you're still a spokeswoman. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I do give talks, like um, I've given talks to um, university students, college students, family members, mental health consumers, uh, people in psychology classes, people in nursing, kinetics, uh, in pharmacy, all types of things. I, um, I also, um, yeah, I, I, I do also like conferences and things, and I've done also some video work that's been online, YouTube, talking about my art as well, and my, and my journey. That being the case, where do you, what do you do as far as quiet time? Because that's something that's very important. Yeah, so balancing like times of high productivity with exercise. So walking, um, getting us sleep, um, downtime. Um, I do a bit of journaling, um, listening to music, watching television actually, watching uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry, who is a health official in BC talking about COVID and and what we can do to, uh, you know, flatten the curve, et cetera. Um, yeah, so seeing my friends, socialization is super important. Um, and then if I, if I am um, having issues, like having someone to kind of um, bounce ideas off like a springboard. So uh, say my, um, you know, my uh, therapist or, you know, a family member who can help me um, overcome things when I'm losing insight around my illness so I can kind of get back on the right page and say okay that's probably not part of the true reality and kind of be able to work through on you know thoughts that kind of break through you know during wellness so it's it's a bit of a tightrope walk because I may seem very well but at times I'm still veering off onto tangents in my mind so it's really about keeping focused um, staying well, having enough relaxation time, and and being with people. You know, uh, that's so important. Even, again, referring to uh, uh, a proverbial saying, it says that one who is isolating himself is seeking his own longing. And what that really helps us to appreciate is that many times when we are just cutting ourselves off, then perhaps the illnesses that we face can take over. And mm -hmm. so a good thing and an example for everyone is that socialization. So again, thank you, Sandra. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say to, let's just say, I know there are some friends of mine personally that are gonna see this and they are dealing with mental illness. Mm -hmm. What can you say to give them some encouragement? Yeah, I wanna say that recovery is possible. You can find the right treatment. Um, it, you, can, you can really have um, a good life, you can. And that also there is hope. Like a lot of people, they lose hope. They don't think there's some, anything else out there. But through determination and perseverance, finding support, finding things you like to do, hobbies or work or volunteer or ways to give back, um, there's ways you can still find joy in life and purpose in life. And I truly believe that for everyone. I think, you know, any, everybody has struggles, right? They could be, it could be financial, it could be um, economic, or, or um, it could be, you know, family issues, you know, divorce, whatever things. But I think we all need to work through things. We all have our, our, our weaknesses, our problems, but go with your strengths and focus on what really gives you meaning in life. Thank you so very much for that. And with that, we're gonna tell you why. You know, my whole saying is don't just climb your mountain, crush through it. And certainly you have done that yourself and we want you to just keep on crushing. And again, we're looking forward to your next book as well yeah. as your next, and, and, and your next great work of art. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much for the interview. That's really great. Thank you.